Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. I recently picked up a Blackview dash cam to install on my Tesla Model X. The Blackview dash cam is by far the most popular dash cam that Tesla owners install, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It is a little pricey, however, there's two cameras, one for the front and one for the rear. You can wire it up so that the cameras record continuously, and there's a shock sensor so that if anybody hits your car while it's parked, it can record that video and save, even if you don't have it recording continuously. It's also Wi-Fi enabled, so if you put a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car, you can just connect to it remotely and see the live video feed and also get alerts. So my plan is to install the dash cam myself. I've never actually installed a dash cam before, but I did some research online and it looks pretty easy. There are a few tricky parts with the Model X, and I'm going to go over those for you guys when I get to them. And before you go to install it, there's a few things you'll need in preparation. The dash cam comes with a cigarette uh, adapter, and I didn't want to have to plug it into a cigarette adapter, and on the Model X, those don't provide power when the car's off. So you can just hardwire it in. However, I didn't want to have to cut the wires on it in case down the line I end up moving this to a different car or, or something. So instead of cutting the end off the cigarette lighter, I bought this adapter on Amazon. I'm going to cut the wire on this and I can hardwire that into the car and then just plug the cigarette lighter in here. That's my plan to start with. I'm going to see how it works. I may end up just scrapping this idea and hardwiring the uh, dash cam right into the power. The other stuff you're going to need, uh, some trim tools. I bought a kit of trim tools on Amazon. Uh, Pretty cheap, I think they're like eight bucks. But this will help you run the, the wire to the back cam and to the power. Now the trickiest part with the Model X, if you don't want to see the cable running along that gigantic windshield, you're going to need to hide it. Some people have actually taken the existing conduit that houses the wires for the autopilot and rear view mirror and all that, and they take that off and run the cable through there. I wasn't brave enough to attempt that. Uh, and I didn't want the wires showing, so there's two other options. You can buy uh, that actual OEM channel from Tesla, but they charge like 90 bucks for it. And as you guys know, I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> so didn't wasn't gonna do that. So I searched around and ended up finding these cord cover kits. These things are about the same size as the OEM channel, uh, so it should be able to run the cable through there easily. They're not gonna look unsightly. The only problem is, of course, they're white. To solve that, you can get some charcoal spray paint. Uh, you can get it at Home Depot, buy it from Amazon, Lowe's, uh, any places. Rust-Oleum chalked charcoal paint. It's very close to the color of the OEM channel. So, this is one of the channels that's been painted already, and there's a slit down the side so you can easily get the cable that way instead of having to fish it through. So with these channels, the only other thing you have to worry about is there's already tape on it. However, the tape's white, so that's not going to look good. So you have to scrape the tape off, but you'll want to do that before you go to spray paint them. When you, after you spray paint it, it's going to look like this. Very close match to the OEM channel. You're only going to need one of these, and this is actually too long. I'm going to have to cut this, but I still have to take the measurement to figure out how long to cut it. And the last thing you're going to need is some double-sided tape. I picked up the 3M acrylic black tape, uh, automotive tape. Uh, this way it blends in, you're not really going to be able to see it from the outside, and it's just going to help give that OEM look. Alright, so here goes nothing. I'm going to get started. So before you start the installation, it's a good idea to go ahead and clean your windshield. That way all the stuff sticks properly. Now, to ensure that your dash cam is installed right side up, you're going to want to make sure uh, all the text is right side up on the bracket where it says black view. Uh, that'll be right side up facing you. And if you look on the front of the camera, the text on the front of the camera will be right side up facing the windshield. You want the lens to line up with the middle of the car. so. The adhesive part is going to be on the passenger side, and you want it just below uh, the 
the autopilot sensor uh, in the cameras. That way it's kind of hidden behind the rear view mirror. It doesn't affect your field of vision when you're driving. Success, I got the tape off, so I think I'm ready to uh, install the stash cam. Make sure I've got that lined up. So the channel should be 25 inches. Uh, that way, you can go ahead and pre cut yours. Uh, well, let's see how 25 inches works out. I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and I'll be right back. So this channel, you can cut it with plain old scissors. Pretty easy. You're going to want to make it a little bit shorter than 25 inches, probably 24 and a half. So I ran both the cables through here, and I decided I'm going to put the side with the slit towards the OEM channel. That way you can't see that. It should give it a little bit cleaner of a look. You're going to want to run the cables towards the driver's side, because we're going to tap into the power down by the... Uh, the driver's side kick plate. That works pretty well. There were a few spots where I didn't get it quite as close together as I would like. You're not going to notice unless you're right underneath it. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach these two cables so that way I can feed all the excess back up uh, before I start running the cables. Now you want to make sure you plug the correct ones in. Uh, the power one is silver, the video feed to the back camera is gold. So you don't want to screw those up. Uh, I read online some people have done that and they uh, end up breaking the pin in the cable. To run them in the beginning, it's really easy. There's a gap up here and you basically just drop the cables in there. So I'm only going to run the power cable right now. The video cable goes to the back of the car. So I'm going to come around here with the video cable and go to the back. The power cable though, I'm going to stay up here and go down. So there's two places you can access constant uh, 12 volt power. You can either plug into the OBD2 port which is uh, right up under here uh, or there's a plug right in here that white plug that's back there if you pull up the carpet, it just tucks into here. Uh, you can pull your carpet out and access that plug. So I'm going to attempt to wire into that plug there. I'm going to splice into the 12 volt cable down by the kick plate with these quick splices. But I've never used these before, so I'm going to give it a shot and hopefully these work out all right. So the tricky part with running the cable to the back, the windshield's easy, there's just a channel you tuck it right into, but then to get it through to here, you have to go down along this seam, going across this pillar, there's a seam right here, pretty easy to tuck it in. And now, to go around the falcon wing door, We've got the same thing we had on the windshield where there's just this channel here that you can just easily just tuck the cable right into uh, very, very simply. So I've just removed the black plastic trim from the top of the window, the hatchback. When I pulled it off, I ended up breaking some of the clips. Now for you guys, if you're trying to remove this trim, you can see how these clips, the whole, here's where the clips go. You want to pull this trim straight off this way, right? parallel to the ground, if your hatch is completely open. Uh, and that should reduce the likelihood that the clips will break. I ended up kind of prying it from the top. I couldn't, couldn't really get a good grip on the bottom. So I kind of stuck my fingers down on the top and pulled down this way. And that's probably why they broke off. Now to run the cable to get it to here, I'm going to run it through this rubber conduit. This area of the vehicle is outside of the car technically, so you don't really want the cable uh, here exposed to weather, uh, rain, snow, all that stuff. So I was able to pry it out 
on each end and I'm going to fish the, the cable through there. So after a lot of deliberation, I decided to fish one string down through here and then I was able to, to grab it from in here. I took a uh, wire coat hanger, kind of made a hook on it, and was able to grab the string and, and pull it out. So that's what this guy is right here. Uh, so this was from up here, it comes out here. And then to get it up to the falcon wing door, I took a wire coat hanger with a string duct taped to the end and was able to fish it through. And again, I was able to, to loop it and grab it here. You can see where I fished the coat hanger through. There's a bundle of wires inside uh, the liner. And that's where I fished it underneath that bundle and through. It's, you know, only about eight inches deep. Okay, so I successfully pulled the coat hanger out with the string attached to it. So now I'm basically going to do the reverse. I'm going to take this string, tie it off to the end of the um, coax cable, uh, electrical tape it so I don't have any loose ends or anything, anything to snag on, and then I'm going to carefully pull this uh, the string back through. Fishing the cable through the headliner once I got all of the strings fished through, that was really easy. Getting it through this conduit was a real pain. Uh, to fish a string through, I took a wire coat hanger and it must have taken me 20 or 30 minutes to get, to get it fished through that way, to get the string. And then to pull the head through took me probably about 10 minutes. Uh, so here's the head duct taped up to the string. That took about 10 minutes, and the I think the only reason why I ended up getting it is because I finally decided to try lowering the, the hatch. So I closed it uh, part of the way, which put a little bit more slack on this conduit and allowed me to pull the cable. Uh, I wish I had done that 30 minutes ago. It probably would have made my life a lot easier. After you fish your video cable all the way through, you're going to want to reattach the conduit here um, at each end. This conduit, again, protects the cables because technically this is outside of the car. So that hole should be the dead center. So you want your lens lined up with that. Uh, one suggestion is to go ahead and tape the camera kind of in the spot that you want it uh, before wire taping down these wires. Uh, that way you'll know how much wire you have and it makes it a little easier to wrap the wire up. I just have to put the the plastic cover piece back on and then I will do the, the adhesive for the camera to lock it into place. It's just held on with electrical tape right now as a placeholder. I wanted to wait till I got the cover back on before I got that down securely in case it was interfering. Here's the back camera. I reinstalled the trim and attached the the camera to the back window. Here's the front camera fully installed. Uh, that light on there is the Wi-Fi light. I don't think there's a way to turn that off. Uh, so I'm just going to end up covering that with pieces of electrical tape. But from the driver's point of view, you can't see the camera at all. 